Hello, Sillaholics, and welcome to Sillaholics Anonymous. If this is your first time here, I do hope that you enjoy this video and the contents of my channel and will choose to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I release new content. If you are a subscriber, thank you for the support and welcome back. I am starting up a new series of videos that will feature quick tip videos where I will try to keep those tips um, in under 10 minutes. So preferably five minutes, so five to 10 minutes for those uh, quick tip ones. And for tutorials, I'm trying to do my best to keep them under 12 minutes for full on tutorials. So we will see how this goes. I do hope that you guys enjoy this new series and this way of me doing videos and teaching. I figure if I give you little nuggets here and there, it will make learning Silhouette Studio just that much easier. In this video, I'm going to focus on teaching you the difference between knockout design and knockout bulk. A lot of the times we will mention these things in Facebook groups and when you say knockout, people have different definitions of what it is. So I'm going to attempt to kind of create some phrasing that we can use in the crafting world so that we can identify what it is, we're exact, exactly what it is we're trying to do. So whether it is a knockout design or knockout bulk. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this. I posed the question um, on a Facebook Live about what I should use for this particular tutorial and it was suggested that I use Kobe. So that's what I'm going to use. It's just a silhouette of him and I've typed out his name in you know just a regular font. When it comes to doing the knockout design, using a big chunky font, chunky font, excuse me, does work best because it will allow you to see more of the design or silhouette or image uh, shape, whatever it is that you're going to create that knockout with. It allows you to see more of it. When you go with something a little bit thinner, you're going to lose a lot of the detail. The other thing with doing this is you want to have your fonts, your text, excuse me, closer together. So once you type it out, I may have already adjusted this, but I'll show you how to adjust it. You're going to come to your text style window, which is the A to the right hand side. And down here for character spacing, you're going to adjust it to where it comes in a little bit closer. So if I go, oh, no, I'm sorry, did not mean to go zero. Let's go back to the full on spacing. This is how this font will normally um, appear. All right. I want it to be closer together. I originally start off with sliding in my character spacing. If I go too far, go to, you know, um, or spread it out too much, I'll end up coming to the actual numbers and type it in or use the arrows next to the percent sign. So for this one, I'm going to go with like 90. That's pretty close there. Not much of a gap in between where I'm going to put this image. When it comes to the knockout design, if you type it out, you really don't have to modify it like such as ungroup it or make it a compound path, convert to path. You can do the knockout design right from the text format. All right, because I'm gonna show you knockout bulk, I'm going to duplicate this and put this off to the side. All right, I'm going to send my text to the back. So right click, send it to the back. And I'm gonna take these two, come over here to my um, transform, and I'm gonna align them. Oh, I forget, can't align to the bottom because this is still in text mode. I'm gonna bring this up to about there. And let me shrink it down first before I kind of move it down because it's gonna move around a lot. So I'm gonna pull that down to where it fits within the word. And I'm going to try to get this right up to the edge of the word. There we go. And then I will just decide where I'm going to put it. Note that when you have certain fonts, like with this one, the O is really big. So I'm going to lose, you know, that much of his arm when it comes to the arms on this side, it would be the inside of the B and then the little space in between. I'm going to move this over just so slightly. So I only cut off part of his ear, but you will get most of his silhouettes within this. Now, the way that I do my knockout design, it's very, very easy, very simple, just a few steps. 
we're going to highlight both the text and the shape or image, whatever it is that you're uh, cropping out or um, knocking out. You're going to right click and you're gonna copy. Then you're gonna come over to your modify panel and it doesn't matter which one you do first, um, but you're going to do a combination of subtract and crop. So th this one, I'm just gonna hit subtract and I'm left with the outside part of this. And do I have something else selected? I don't know, it's kind of picking up kind of high. I'm gonna click off and select just here. I was picking up something kind of high. I'm gonna fill this with color and then I'm gonna right click and group it together. Then I'm going to right click and paste in front. So not just the regular paste. Whenever I'm doing my knockouts, I like to be able to see them together. If you just paste, it's going to um, separate them. So you paste in front. Once you do that, we're gonna crop and we have that part cropped out. And wherever there's the opening, there the image is no longer there. We're gonna go ahead and make that purple and it does separate it, so we're gonna right click and group that together. I'm gonna select it and remove the line color. So there is Kobe um, cropped inside the word Kobe, All right? Now, if I wanted to do something where um, I'm going to highlight this, so someone asks the question, is it the same as doing an offset? Yes and no. <laughs> I'm going to sample the color for this one and also spread this back out just a little bit so you can really see it. So let's go back up to 100. I'm gonna go to offset. I'm gonna put a slight offset around this and I'm gonna make it corner and I'm gonna hit apply. I'm gonna go ahead and fill that with the purple, the same purple, right click and group it together. Now, the way that this currently sits, if I was doing this with adhesive vinyl, heat transfer vinyl, the gold will sit directly on top of the purple. So the gold would never touch my substrate, you know, whatever, whether it was glass or window or shirt, whatever it is, it wouldn't touch it. It will sit on top. So in that area, it's going to be a full two layers of vinyl thick. I'm gonna undo. If I wanted to knock out the bulk, meaning it's going to fit like a puzzle and both pieces, both colors will touch my substrate. You're going to just select them both, go over to modify and you're going to choose subtract all. This will subtract the front from the back, but keep both parts. If you just do subtract, you're just going to get the back part. Undo, we're gonna go subtract all it's going to look like nothing has changed, but if I move the front Kobe, you will see the outline of um, with the purple. So it just creates an outline around whatever um, is there. Now, depending on what you're doing, this can or cannot, you know, pose an issue with heat transfer vinyl, especially the smooth one. You will get some shrinkage, especially if you have your heat dialed up too high and you may see gaps in between it and see the color of your shirt coming through in between. I personally don't really prefer to do it this way um, unless I'm doing glitter because glitter doesn't shrink as much, but you can try to minimize it with the three second tack um, method if you are able to warm peel or hot peel. And then you would put, it doesn't matter which one you put down, you will put down the other color and then go from there. With this, both, I, both parts will touch the substrate comes out a little bit cleaner when you use adhesive vinyl and you use the alignment mark method or as some videos call it registration, but you still kind of take the chance of it being slightly off and you having gaps in between your letters. I personally prefer to do it the first way where you have a solid backing and then you have the other color on front. But that is the difference between doing a knockout design where you are cropping a silhouette or a shape to it and you won't have it in those open areas. And this is knockout bulk where you are creating a puzzle piece to where both colors or three colors or four colors, however many it is, will actually touch your substrate and not be layered directly on top of each other. So hopefully this video helped you understand the difference in the two. If you have any other quick tip or quick tutorial suggestions, please feel free to leave them as a comment below. Thumb up this video. Let me know that you enjoyed the content of it. Subscribe to the channel. Leave me a comment. 
and share, share, share. That is the greatest form of support is for you guys to share this video out. All right, guys, until next time, have a great one.